So you've just been for a run, you need to stretch everything out. This is going to be a nice 10 minute post run stretching routine. We're going to make a start. I'm going to start the timer and we're going to make sure it's 10 minutes. We're going to bring your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. We're going to have a little bit of a wiggle left and right, just loosening to the hips, loosening the elbows and the wrists, just settling to your position mat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the left knee up towards the left wrist like this. And then we're going to take the right foot backwards with the right knee lifted. Take the left foot across the mat to the right side and then start to walk the back knee down and walk the back knee backwards and the left hip comes towards the floor. You can always use a cushion if you need to or a block. Pause the, pause the video if you need to. Now push the right hip slightly towards the left heel. Take your hands closer to your hips. Keep those elbows and shoulders relaxed. And then we're going to make it nice and slow dynamic movement. So I get asked this a lot. Why do you do dynamic rather than static? So for me, dynamic gives you the most in such a short time. You get the most out of it in such a short time. So to get flexibility gains, we need to be doing static stretching for three to five minutes. So if we was to do a 10 minute video, we'd only be able to do one stretch on one side, one stretch on the other side, really. But what we can do is when you dynamically stretch, we can retrain the central nervous system because our perception of tightness creates tightness. So where we feel or where we, where we perceive tightness is where our body will hold that tightness. But what we can do is work up to it, massage, as we go left and right with this and breathe in. And then you'll notice as you breathe and relax into it, your body starts to open up and goes, ah. So there's firing of those muscle receptors that start to send alarm bells ringing, going, whoa, I'm not being here, I don't know what we're doing. That as you breathe and you relax, they start to be okay with that. So they're like, oh no, it's okay. I'll just release a little bit and just not be as tense. So that's why dynamic stretching is great. That was quite a long introduction to that. So <laughs> I like to explain things. So we're going to bring your hands back and push into the mat. Lift that back knee as you bring that left foot back and just feel all of that work they've just done on that side. Have a little bit of a wiggle. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So bringing the right knee up, take the right foot across the mat, walk the left foot back into that nice pigeon. And then again, just finding that shape. I'm just going to come a little bit higher up the mat actually. And then let's have a little bit of movement side to side. Bring the hands closer to the hips. Use the movement to really massage the hips down. So it just feels nice. It just feels really good to massage into the hips, into the glute. Maybe you get a little bit in the hamstring, keep the elbows and the shoulders relaxed. Breathing in and out through the nose. Nice opportunity to just take 10 minutes out of your busy life. If you're a parent like me, you just need to take that opportunity to just breathe. I know it's not, a lot of us don't have the opportunity to do longer practices. So these nice short practices are a great way just to have a little bit of recovery, a little bit of looking after your body before you start the rest of your day. Almost there. How's this feeling? And then we're gonna to go to, we're gonna push the hands into the mat, lift the back knee, step that right foot backwards. We're gonna work, work into the toes and the arches of the feet, maybe into the knees as well. So be conscious of the knees. If you get pain, don't go any further with this. Tuck the toes under, and then you're gonna slowly start to send the hips towards the heels. Pause if you get any, if you get any pain or tender sensations. Push into the palms of the hands and round through the back a little bit. So separate the shoulder blades. Really important as we go through this that you don't copy me and just put your body into something for the sake of my body being in the, in the shape of it. You listen to your body. Your body will be different to mine. Okay, and just have a, maybe a little bit of side to side movement if it feels good or you can just keep pushing into it. Keep breathing in and out through the nose. Really stretching those big toes. So the big toes... Take 40% of our body weight each. They should flex at least 30 degrees. So we want to keep that toe function healthy. And we can do that again with dynamic stretching like this, particularly at the end of a run. So well done for looking after your big toes. They look after you. Okay, and I'm gonna walk the hands forwards now towards the top of the mat. As we walk forwards, we're gonna step the left foot to the outside of the left hand, working into the hips and the groin. Let the hips sink down at the back so the right hip sinks down. Have a little bit of movement, again, left and right. Massage into that. Breathe as you do it. Keep the elbows, shoulders 
relaxed. Maybe open up the left knee from the left upper arm, really work into that hip and the groin. If you find anything that feels nice to work into and you want to pause into it, you do that. Again, you make it your own practice. I'm just here as your kind of yoga guide, your post-run stretching yoga guide to help you get some recovery in. Now, you might need to pause the video for this one and maybe get a strap or a, a dressing gown strap. Because what we're going to do is, now the back leg, the back foot, we're going to, we're going to bring that up towards the sky. Make sure that right knee's safe. We're going to take the left hand, so left foot's here, left hand, and reach and get hold of that foot. We're going to find a nice deep stretch into the hip flexors and the quads, quad muscles. And then we're just going to release the hip down to the floor. And if you need to, you can pause the video and get a yoga strap or a dressing gown strap or something to pull that foot in, take hold of the strap. You can always use a wall or a settee as well, a cut sofa if you've got one. So you can just keep nice, relaxed breathing if you can. I know it's quite an intense stretch. So we're here. Last one. And then just slowly release, don't let that foot twang. And then hands to the mat, step that left foot backwards. Just feel all of that work that we've just done. Have a little bit of a wiggle. And then we're going to come backwards. And then as we come forwards, we're going to step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. I can lunge deep into the hips, have a little bit of a wiggle, side to side, massage, use the movement to massage the body. Again, nice, open the knee away from the upper arm if it feels good, work into the hips and the groin. Push the left hip down into the floor. Just find that nice feel good, like, oh, that feels good, and <laughs> right in there. If you're enjoying this practice, press the little thumbs up button. It takes you two seconds, but it really does help. It means that I'm seeing that people are benefiting from this video. I'll make more videos like this one. Let me know how it felt for you. What did you enjoy about it? What did it feel good? Where in your body did it feel good? And if you're not subscribed, do subscribe to my channel. Join my growing community. Okay, and then we're going to, again, lift the back foot. So the left knee, make sure the left knee is comfortable. Get that strap if you need to. Left foot up. Take hold of the left foot in the right hand. So right hand on the left foot. Let the left hip sink down to the floor. Keep the left arm and shoulder relaxed. You can look up to the sky or look down. Try and keep, keep space and relaxation in the, in the shoulders. Again, keep breathing if you can in and out through the nose. So you're signaling to the body that's okay. You know what you're doing, you're here, you're breathing, you're relaxing, you're in control. Giving your body a good stretch after that run. How was your run? What did you notice about your run? What did you notice in your body about your run? Okay, and then we're slowly release that left foot, don't let it twang. Bring the hand to the floor, step the right foot back. Feel that after sensations, again, touch the toes together. Slowly rest the hips towards the heels. Make sure it feels safe for the knees. If it doesn't, don't go all the way deep into it. And just have a little bit of a push. Again, round through the back, just chin towards the chest. Just stretch the shoulder blades. Nice, good stretch for the upper back. Okay, and then we're going to just gently start to walk to the top of the mat. And we can come to Sphinx Pose. Stretch the legs out, toes touch. Press into the elbows and the hands. If this feels okay, stay here. If it feels like you could go a little bit more, you could bring your hands underneath your shoulders, slightly bend the elbows, pull the shoulders back, and we could go into upward facing dog. But if this is too intense, come back down onto that sphinx pose, which is more supported. Keep breathing into the belly button. Smile. Well done for looking after your body after this run that you've been doing, because it's so common for us runners to skip, I have this so many times with my clients, skip the post-run stretching. So important, not just for your body, but for relaxation. And we're gonna come slowly back up. We're gonna come into a seated position. We're gonna take your feet nice and wide. We're gonna get into the hips and the groin one last time. So feet as wide as you comfortably can, push your hips forwards. Hands behind your hips, push your belly button forwards and your chest. Or if you feel comfortable, we can bring your hands on the inside. 
have a little bit of side to side movement. So skipping the post run stretch is not only not good for your body, but it's not good for your, your brain as well. It's not good for your mental health. You need that opportunity to slow down. You need to let your breathing recover. You need to just signal to your body that you're gonna go slowly transitioning back into your everyday life. You're gonna have the opportunity to breathe and just have that space to stretch and relax, which is good for your mental health as much as your physical health. So basically what I'm saying is don't skip the post stretch. So there we go, that's the post run stretch. How did you feel with that? Again, just to press that little thumbs up, it takes two seconds. Leave me a comment, let me know what your thoughts of that nice post run stretching routine. And if you aren't, do subscribe to the channel and I'll be able to see you in the next video that I post. Thank you for following along with me and I shall see you in the next one.